Hello, this is Dimitri49, a guest reviewer for product feedback. This video is an oversimplified water cooling guide. What you'll need to buy, what tips and tricks that I can give you from my very first experience with water cooling. So let's get started. So most people water cool for two main reasons. One is that you water cool your components uh, very well. To allow a, an extreme overclock now this is especially uh, very popular for your cpu or even your gpu number two is to make your build more quiet now this is especially important for your graphics card because if you overclock you will have to make sure that the graphics card stays cool and the only way to provide that if you uh, run on air is to ramp up your uh, fan and that causes very annoying noise inside your case so a lot of people substitute that with for a water block and make sure that the card stays cool even if it's overclocked extremely. Now, before you purchase all your water cooling components, you have two options. Your first option is to purchase a complete water cooling kit, uh, and uh, numerous manufacturers provide that, and that is everything included, you don't have to worry about something missing. Now, a second option is to go for a custom water loop, which you everything you have to purchase separately. Now, this is an option that a lot of people do go for, uh, but be careful, make sure that everything is compatible and make sure that you get all the parts that you need, which I will go over in this tutorial. Now, prior pulling out your wallet and purchasing all the parts, make sure that your case can hold everything that you're purchasing, can hold all the water cooling parts, that's a radiator, your pump, your reservoir, uh, and tubing, and make sure to come, come up with a layout of how everything will be set up inside your case. And this will help you to determine if you're somehow missing something or if you have to purchase something additionally for your water cooling setup. Um, and that has definitely helped me. Now the five main components uh, for your water cooling loop. Now there's the CPU block, which is probably the most important. Uh, the CPU block comes for your graphics card, for your CPU, for your motherboard and your memory. Make sure to purchase your CPU block compatible with your socket. Number two is tubing, which carries the coolant through the components. Now there's a myth that larger tubing provides much better cooling for your components and that is not true. Both tubing, large and smaller in diameter, provide extremely well cooling. Uh, it is true that the larger tubing provides slightly better cooling performance than smaller tubing, but I would recommend that you choose your tubing size strictly depending on how you want it to look inside your case. Number three is your fittings, which connect the tubing to your water cooling components. There's two types of fittings. There's compression fittings and there's also barb fittings. I would strongly suggest you buy compression fittings, which are slightly more expensive, but they provide extremely less uh, hassle operation, very easy to use, and they also look very clean inside uh, your water loop. The fourth component for your cooling is your reservoir, which holds the coolant. There's three types of reservoirs. There's the bay reservoir, which slides into a five and a quarter inch bay. There's the box reservoir, and there's also the tube reservoir. All three is basically the same thing. However, you can choose one depending on how you want your water cooling look uh, to look inside your case. And the fifth and final component of your water loop is your pump, which is the engine behind the current of the flow of the coolant through your loop. Now, all pumps are basically the same thing. However, the pumps differentiate in power and how much water they can pump through the loop. Larger pumps and stronger pumps can pump up more water and thus cool better. Uh, and you can cool multiple components with a stronger pump. However, a weaker pump as well can cool very well for one component if you wish to cool your either your GPU or your processor. And of course, you need your radiator. They come in different sizes. Choose yours depending on the number of components you'd like to cool. A regular 240 rad will utilize dual 120 millimeter fans. It's sufficient enough to keep one or two components cool. However, a more enthusiast setup would contain a triple or even a quad rat for extreme PC cooling. So now there's a couple of disadvantages on your water and cooling is that you have to refill your reservoir. And that is of course not daily procedure. However, you have to make sure that there's coolant at all times in your reservoir. If you have a larger reservoir, you might want to refill it every month. If you have a smaller like me, it's about every week. Uh, but uh, it's not a hassle, just open it up and you put in more coolant and it's very easy to do. Of course, some people experience leaks but that is of course due to improper installation. So make sure to read all the manuals, make sure you know what you're doing, uh, be patient, and if you're running into some problems with uh, compatibility, check out online forums or leave a comment down this below in this video and I will make sure to reply to your comment if you have any questions. So I hope this very simple water cooling guide has been helpful. 
please make sure to subscribe and thanks for watching. To be updated on the latest product feedback videos, make sure that you have subscribed.